Francis, he and he, he calms this nature goddess down and says, look, if you destroy all the humans, it's just going to make things worse. I'm a druid. There's two other druids. You've already met Sheehan. Um, but we're already bound to the earth. And so we'll, I'll make sure that, that we come by on a regular basis and help do what we can to heal your ecosystem. But in the meantime, I'm training up six more druids. I got six more apprentices. Two of them are from this area. One's from Peru. The other's from Brazil. And he said, and I reckon once they're ready, they'll be coming by here and do some damage control and healing work and all that. So there is hope. It'll be a lot of work and it'll take a lot of time, but I promise we will work on it. And so she calms down. Now in the process of talking to this nature goddess, he ends up binding his consciousness to a three-toed sloth named Slomo Brodoli. <laughs> she is a cute character. And so he befriends this little sloth and then as they've been befriended he is summoned by the elementals somewhere in northern europe i can't recall now where but he is summoned to this area where a sorcerer has opened a portal to hell and is spewing out demons and shit and causing all havoc on the earth so he with his new <coughs> excuse me his new sloth friend he goes to fix this situation. And um, by the way, he gets there and the Sisters of the Three Auroras, the Polish witches, are already there taking care of a lot of this shit. But they say, hey, take down the sorcerer and and you will do a lot of good. Like We can kind of keep the demons that are coming out of the portal. We can kind of, we can nick them as they're coming out, but you go take down that sorcerer and then you can close the portal and it'll be fine. Battle ensues, guess who actually takes down the sorcerer? The sloth, slow-mo, woo! <coughs> so he and slow-mo develop a little bit of a friendship he takes her back to arizona where he meets up with his apprentices and they spend time taking care of her and hanging out with her and loving on her but she can't handle the dry air because she's used to um, the amazon so he takes her back to to her homeland and tells her you know hey you come here, you get you get the the time you need to hang off of trees and eat your leaves and all that. And, and on a regular basis, I'll come back and we'll go off on an adventure. And I'll show you more of the world. And, um, and I'll bring you back. And so that's, that's really sweet to see this grouchy old man making friends with a, a three-toed sloth. But that is, that is Owen's adventures and all this. So now we come to Atticus. Besieged ends with a story where Atticus is visited by the Morrigan, who tells him Ragnarok's about to start. And so Atticus upon hearing this goes okay i know what i gotta do and he sits over on down says you can't come on this adventure with me and here's why and long story ensues but um scourged takes uh picks up from the end of that story and so it starts with atticus preparing for ragnarok except he doesn't know exactly when he just knows it's going to be soon so he hunts down his Tyromancer buddy, who's hanging out on uh, Evena Blach, which is one of the Irish plains. She's kind of sick of being there. So he takes her to France, helps her get what she needs to make cheese. If you'll recall, Tyromancy, I don't know what it is. I still haven't looked it up, and I should. But whatever it is, it has something to do with divining the future while making cheese. So... This Tyromancer, I want to say her name is Nikira, and I feel like that's wrong for some reason. Nikira tells Atticus, Ragnarok's going to start on Thursday. This is apparently a Monday or a Tuesday, so 
Atticus says, okay, and he starts making preparations. Be there are two big things that he does before the actual battle starts heralding Ragnarok. Um, the first is he goes back to Arizona and summons the Navajo god Coyote and says, hey, look, I could really use your help. You're the only being I know that could effectively take out hell in all of this because hell has these this undead army of, for one of a better word, zombies called Draugar. And anyone who falls at the hands of the Draugar, Hell can then reanimate and command to fight against their former comrades. So if you can take out Hell, that would be a big help. And you're the only one who can do it because of your unique set of talents. And Coyote says, no. So Atticus says, all right, that's your choice. Meanwhile, he still has to take down Jormungandr because that was part of his deal with the Norse after he invaded Asgard and got Thor killed. So, um, Nikir had already told him when Jormungandr was going to show up. So he, and he, Jormungandr's going to show up in, in, a, in a coast, uh, off the coast of Ireland, southern Ireland. And so he meets up with Laksha. At this point where Jormungandr is going to make his debut. Um, Laksha, if you will recall, before we meet her in Hounded, spent many centuries using her magical abilities and her ethereal body snatching abilities to do a lot of bad things in this world. Leading her to a point when she inhabits Granuel's brain, where she wants to start doing good things in this world. And so she has spent the majority of this series trying to atone for her past, culminating in her inhabiting the body of this woman named Martini, who has a very abusive family. And, um, and who had attempted suicide and ended up in a coma. Which is how Granuil found her and, and Laksha possessed her. And I'm sorry about my microphone. I know it's crackling a little bit. Um, so Laksha shows up in Southern Ireland in Martini's body. Ready to leave that body behind and possess the, the mind of Jormungandr. Now, once she does this, Jormungandr, she's going to shut off his brain and kill him, but he's going to fall back into the ocean. But that is going to kill her spirit because she is an ethereal being. She is a creature of the ether, and creatures of the ether cannot survive in water. If you'll recall that from Shattered, that was how uh, they dealt with the, the demon possessions. So she, Laksha sacrifices herself to save not just Ireland, but humanity. And in so doing, she feels like she has paid a huge chunk of her karmic debt and is ready for whatever faces her on the other side. Meanwhile, Martini, the real Martini, is ready to start a new life because she feels stronger and more powerful. Also, Laksha has left her her vast amount of financial funds. And Atticus helps her start her new life. That being done, Atticus then shifts to Sweden, where the armies of everybody on, quote-unquote, our side are assembling. You got the Dark Elves and the Fae and, and the Aesir and the Alfar and the Dwarves and ev everybody's on that side. They're all assembling. Um, Fand and Monan Monin and McLear come up and say hi. And it is revealed that they have brought along Monanin's Yeti children. So hooray for the Yeti! 
So they show up. They're going to help and they're going to fight and they're going to do their thing. Bereid comes over and says, hey, do you want to put a wager on the battle? There's there's a pool going around. Uh, people are betting on who's going to kill Loki. And Atticus says, okay, give me 20 on Athena. And she goes, yeah, we're not actually betting in money. Uh, it's a thousand Girl Scout cookies. So <laughs> basically the thing is, is, is if the person you bet on or the god or whomever actually kills Loki, then that person gets 500 boxes of Girl Scout cookies and the person who bet on them gets 500 boxes of Girl Scout cookies. Now, if nobody bet on the person who actually kills Loki, they get the full thousand boxes. This is important. Trust me. Um, so the battle starts. Well, actually what starts is the fire giant Sert comes out of the ground <laughs> And starts spewing fire that, that goes far and wide. And this is the fire that starts in the Amazon, if you'll recall, that Owen had to put out. And that angered the nature goddess and all that stuff. So, out comes Sert, and in go the Yeti to minimize what he can do. And they, and they neutralize him and, and kill him, basically. Once he's dead, Hal and Loki and all the Draugar come up from Nivelheim. Now, this portal from Nivelheim drains the earth of power in this area. And I'm crackling again, and I apologize. Um, so, Atticus has nothing from which to draw power for most of this battle. Keep that in mind. So, he starts battling, and everybody on their side starts battling, but there's so many fucking Draugar, and any, anybody that the Draugar kill, uh, get, they, they get reanimated by hell, and start fighting back on the wrong side, and Atticus is starting to get really upset, and so he starts looking around the battlefield in the magical spectrum, and notices some familiar aura. It's Coyote. <laughs> Didn't see that happening. Actually, I did, but <laughs> I was still happy because I love Coyote. So, um, the two of them meet up and team up, and eventually Coyote takes down Hell. Hell's hound, Garm, is really distraught. Loki loses his shit. The Draugar start to disperse because they don't they don't really want to be fighting this battle. They've just done it because Hell made them, but Loki convinces them to start fighting again. And meanwhile, Atticus and Coyote decide that they better get off the battlefield. But before Atticus can shift out of there and get away and buy Coyote a beer or five, Loki starts taunting him and giving him hell. And Atticus, being fucking Atticus, turns around and goes to face him. So, with a sort of cohort or guard or whatever of Fey and Human and Briad and a few other people, Atticus starts making his way to Loki, uh, wearing armor that he pillaged off of dead people. And uh, using weapons that he foraged off of dead people. And, uh, and they head over there and they start fighting. And then out of nowhere, here comes Granny Whale. Pissed. She is fucking pissed. Because not only is she already angry about this whole, you know, kind of shunting her off to the side and keeping her busy like she's a toddler in church with a coloring book... But this is Loki. This is the guy that, 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 that nearly killed her. Broke every... Caused her to have every bone in her body broken. And then while she laid there broken, he stole her whirling blade that the Yeti made her. And not only that, he was the direct reason that her father ended up dying. So she is rightfully angry at this asshole. And she... And so she starts fighting with him uh, alongside Briad. Briad manages to 
disarm him of 